family. Learn methods of using psychology, law, and skill to keep yourself safe from violent criminals. What we're going to share with you today are some techniques, strategies, and tactics that will put you ahead of the decision-making capability of violent criminals. Very important is to understand the psychological uh, motivation of violent criminals. Remember that most violent criminals aren't really after your jewelry. They're not really after your car. What they're after is pain and suffering. So what this program is going to do is help you to understand what type of criminal you're coming across and to make sure that violent criminals cannot have as much of a negative effect on your life as they would like to. By giving you these tools, we hope that this uh, will help you keep yourself and your family safe and increase the likelihood of a nonviolent outcome. One of the things that we emphasize is how to use psychology, law, and skill in that order so that you can create the best possible outcome. And the best possible outcome is always nonviolent. One of the ways we do that is through breaking you down into basic, fundamental understandings. The core of our teaching system is based on the management of threat, deterrence, detection, and defense. To deter situations from happening, it's important to understand the psychological precursors to violent crime. When you're looking at violent criminals, one of the things that you're going to notice is they're going to look like they're not going to be violent. They're going to try to look like drifters. They're going to try to look like people that would never hurt you under any conditions. That way, you will not be able to detect their true intentions. Some of the ways you're going to be able to tell that they have negative intention is that they're going to have a head in the predator position. Their head will be slightly down. This shows not a uh, sign of arrogance or confidence. This shows they're actually targeting. One of the things you're also going to be looking for is anytime they're bladed, their body's turned to the side. This is a natural function of a human predator. To turn to the side, to put one foot back, which gives them the ability to attack quickly the human that they've uh, uh, decided to attack. So what are things you're, some of the things you're looking for are head in the predator position, foot in the rear position, and also remember that some of the things they're going to say to you are to design specifically to offset you so that you cannot see that they're truly a criminal. One of the things you're also going to be looking for is the fact they're going to be looking for exit points. They're going to be staring off to the side while they're talking to you. One of the reasons they're staring off to the side is so that you can't truly make eye contact with them. If you truly make eye contact with them, they believe that you'll know their true intentions. So they're going to try to look away constantly. Uh, this will help them gain confidence and also realizing who might interfere in their attack of you or your family. This also lets them know the route of escape, the route of entry that someone may use to try to stop them from attacking you. So you know what you're looking for. Some of the things you're looking for, again, head being forward, leg, leg being back, them looking for their exit point. And some of the things you can do to, to offset that is make sure that your head is also forward. By your head being forward and looking around, this lets them know that you're paying attention to your environment. This produces in them the belief that you're prepared to defend yourself and your family and does it in a way that's still nonverbal, non-confrontational, non-adversarial. So some of the things you can do to increase likelihood that they'll perceive you as a hardened target, someone that they cannot attack, is to project strength. And some of the ways you do that are your head being forward, looking around, scanning your area, taking in information. That is to say that you're paying attention so closely that predators in your environment see that you're paying attention. Make sure that when you leave for work in the morning or come home from school, uh, don't do it at the exact same time in the exact same way. Change the time, the method, and route of travel. Before you enter any structure, make sure you drive around or look around that structure and look for people that are inappropriate that are outside the, the facility or the home or the building. Also look for ways that people may have illegally accessed that home or that building because when you enter, they might be inside laying in wait for you. So psychology is vital. It's vital to how you're able to read the body language or project your body language so that violent criminals do not believe that they can adversarially attack you and win. And destabilizing the psychological belief structure of a violent criminal is really the best way to defeat them. In other, ver in other words, you're going to defeat their will. If they don't have the will to attack, then you will never see if they have the skill to attack. You want to defeat their ability to believe that you, your family, or your community is open to being targeted. So destabilizing the belief in crime is really the best way to keep you safe, your family, your community, your neighborhood, or your uh, company for that matter. So psychology, law, and skill, that's our basic platform. Legally speaking, you're going to hear a lot of stories about people who defended themselves and still went to jail. Um, one of the things that we emphasize is the understanding of how the law works, how it is articulated, and how it's used to prosecute you. Some of the ways you can keep yourself from getting prosecuted is make sure you follow these, these three rules. Number one, always seek to avoid violent conflict under all conditions. 
So even if you think this person is wrong and they're saying something to you that's aggressive, even if they're producing a situation of conflict, you have an obligation legally to avoid it. So that means physically you have to try to leave and be able to prove that. Secondly, you have to be the first one to try to call the police. If you never call the police, our legal system does not recognize the situation of emergency which you say you were under. So to legally define ourselves as, as a person who's defending ourselves, these are going to be the things that we're going to have to do. Number one, we have to physically leave the scene. Number two, we have to be the first person to call the police and explain the situation. And number three, we can't say or do anything that means we agree to be in conflict with another person. That's called being an equal combatant. So if you're doing any of those three things, even though you're not the one who started the fight, you're not the one who said the aggressive thing, you're not the one that cut off the person in traffic first, remember, you can be prosecuted and you're likely to be prosecuted if any one of those three rules are violated. That is to say that you did not try to physically avoid the situation, if you did not call the police first, and if you did not uh, refrain from saying things or doing things that showed that you were willing to fight. So those three things are vital. Always try to get away from the situation, call the police first, and never agree verbally or physically to be in conflict with someone else.